Welcome back to Carnades.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at what is the well-poisoning fallacy. Now, the well-poisoning fallacy is commonly described as a form of ad hominem fallacy, where the character of the individual is attacked instead of the argument itself. Check out our video on ad hominem for more. Specifically, well-poisoning is where someone preempts your argument by claiming that only someone with some undesirable characteristic would make such an argument, or would object to their position, thereby poisoning the well before you even make your argument argument or make your case. For example, someone might say only idiots offer X type of argument before they believe you are going to offer X argument. They might say only traitors question the decrees of the government before you critique the government. Or someone might say the lizard people have programmed you to think all the people that believe in the lizard people are crazy. You're going to say I'm crazy, but only because they programmed you that way. Now, well poisoning can unfortunately be persuasive, even if it is fallacious, because it makes it seem like the speaker is predicting the future. The speaker gets some level of kind of just intuitive points because they seem to be able to say what you're about to say, and so that can be convincing because it seems like, oh, empirically, they knew what you were going to say, so they must be right because they can predict the future. The fallacy builds on the idea that you knew they would disagree with you. So that must be because they are biased against you, not because your argument is bad. The problem is that, in fact, any such statement is unassailable. If I say, anyone that disagrees with me is an idiot, that's not a good argument. Either you must agree with me or admit that you're an idiot, and therefore I can discount anything you are going to say against me. While convincing in kind of a playground logic type of way, it's not actually an effective argument, because anyone can use it, regardless of how bad their argument actually is. Some philosophers have argued that the definition of poisoning the well should be expanded to include all irrefutable and therefore unfalsifiable statements. They argue any claim that cannot be disproven should be considered a version of this fallacy. Any claim which is constructed in such a way as to be impossible to disprove is a version of this fallacy, in their view. This, however, gets into epistemic problems with levels of falsifiability against various background beliefs. It's more complicated than we want to get into here, but check out our series on underdetermination and the problem of underdetermination for more on the details about issues with falsifiability. So let's take a look at some examples. Person A says, the media dislikes my candidate, so they will always criticize him no matter what he does. Person B, your candidate just murdered a litter of puppies. Person A, see, I told you the media was out to get him. Only a biased media would report on such a harmful story to his image. Person A, the police hate my friend. I am sure they're going to arrest him under some false pretense any day now. Person B, your friend just got caught on tape robbing a bank and shooting the hostages. He's going to jail. Person A, see, I told you the police were biased against him. Both of these are examples of the poisoning the well fallacy. In both cases, person A says this is going to happen and it's going to happen because of the reasons that I say it's going to happen, because people are biased against me or my friend or my candidate. Person B says that thing you said happened and person A responds exactly. This is exactly what I was talking about and therefore my reasoning must be correct because my prediction was correct. The poisoning the well fallacy has this problem because you're saying that you're because your prediction is correct, your reasoning that got you to that prediction must be correct. But as both these examples demonstrate, that's not always the case. Just because you were able to predict something doesn't mean that the reason that you said that thing would happen is actually the reason it would happen. Let's take a look at some examples, more examples. Anyone that refuses to acknowledge the truth of the ontological argument for God's existence only does so because they are evil and trying to lead others astray. Person B, actually, I have some objections to the ontological argument. If you want to check out Carnady's objections, check it. We have over a hundred. Check out the series on the ontological argument for more. Person A, you must be evil, and I should not listen to your lies. Stay back, Satan! Person A, if we lose, it's only because they stole the election from us by cheating. But if we win, the election was legitimate, and everything was run fairly. Person B, looks like you won some races, and you lost some others. Person A, you see, they were out to get us, and they rigged the races we lost. The races we won were the only fair ones, clearly, because we were able to win in a fair environment, but 
We only lost in the situations where it was rigged. Once again, both of these are examples of the poisoning the well fallacy. Person A is predicting something and then providing reasoning that there is bias involved in that prediction coming true. And so when the prediction comes true, they claim that their claim of bias must be true as well, even when it's not. What do you think? Are there any examples of well poisoning of the well poisoning fallacy you've encountered recently? Should it be expanded on to include all instances of unassailable or unfalsifiable statements? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at carneades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.